Glad when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning, Good morning. and welcome to worship this morning. I have several announcements. Um, first, I would like to do the Vanna White um, work of the church. Um, Valinda has a new toy. Um, this is part of a gift from Gladys Cove. Earlier this year, she called and said, what can I do for the music department? And we said, well, we'd like a new electronic keyboard. And she pulled out all of the stops. We placed an order. It came in after months and months. Uh, Belinda went down to Sioux Falls last week to take delivery on the piano. And um, her husband, Todd, came over on Monday night. The three of us put it together, and we have new music. And so um, we'll be fiddling with some of the levels. The more comfortable she gets with it, the more bells and whistles she'll be able to use, right? So, um, so we want you to thank Laddie um, and, and enjoy the gift. So um, I have a, a few other announcements. Um, the rummage sale, the PW ladies have been hard, hard, hard at work all summer. Um, and I think, are you still accepting things even through this week? Um, I think somebody will be here every day this week to receive stuff and to work on the final things. So if you have that final push of things to include for the rummage, um, books, gently used items, no televisions, no clothing. Um, is that, did I get it right? Okay. Um, so we have that. And then um, Simone Murnlock there um, continues her recovery process, but it's very, very slow. She's still having quite a little bit of pain and suffering some nausea. Um, several of us are working to help provide meals for them for a couple of weeks. And um, also, um, we've been asked for prayers for Jean Dell. Uh, Jean was enrolled in hospice earlier this week. She's been having a severe amount of pain and is in the nursing unit at Bethesda. Um, I will be seeing her sometime this week as soon as I can get something scheduled and coordinated over there. Um, I also want to uh, ask you to keep Shelly Jones and her family in prayer. Shelly's mother died earlier this week. The funeral is Wednesday morning at Shriver's at 11 o'clock. Um, and also, um, Margie uh, stopped me as we came in to worship, and she wanted me to ask for prayers for her daughter, Pauline, and Pauline's boyfriend, Mike. Um, they have both contracted COVID and are in San Antonio, Texas. Mike has been hospitalized, and the doctors have not given him a good outlook for recovery, very, very small percentage. And so we want to keep uh, Pauline and Mike and you know Margie and Terry in our prayers as they um, do what they can to support, but the best thing we can do right now is, is offer our prayers. I also have a friend whose father is hospitalized um, in the Kansas City area. So um, the, the COVID stuff is no fun. And, um, and while our numbers are not reported, but weekly here in, in South Dakota, we want to be aware um, that uh, the CDC is still urging us to take those precautions. So you'll see me with my mask on um, if I'm in close proximity and if I'm out in public. Um, so anyway. Um, um, I'm going to say it though. There, um, there are a lot of significant anniversaries that that happen in our lives, and um, today is the anniversary of Tim's mother's death. So we want to keep Tim and and his family in our prayers um, and offer just that little energy and extra support and love because grief is awful and it's really hard. And some days are a lot harder than others, aren't they? And we all of us know this. 
Um, so anyhow, we love you and support you and, and ask God's blessings upon you. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, I wanted to tell you that Cordell Ring, uh, oh, yes. you know, we sang in the uh, choir, was able to, he was working in the law office as a teacher, so he was able to come to Aberdeen and shop at our rubbish sale and get things to set up his apartment as well, like we had done for Justin. And he was very appreciative of that, and we were very blessed to be able to do that for him. Our, our college students come back to us and they say, hey, mom and dad church family. <laughs> What, what can I take as I strike out on my own? And so I don't, if, if you didn't hear what Sheila said, um, uh, Cordell Ring, who graduated last December from Northern, but who has been in our choir and singing ensemble and, and very present and is one of our own members, um, has set up his, his new apartment over in Mowbridge as he begins his teaching job this fall in, in um, Laughlin. And the PW Rummage Sale came to the rescue and we got him loaded up with a carload of stuff. So we're very, very happy that we can support our college students like that. Um, when it's time, take note. <laughs> um, anything else? Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
as we understand it, we fall prey to sin and temptation. We trespass against God and against one another. But God, who is merciful and abounding in steadfast love and grace and kindness, will forgive our sins if we but ask and receive this gift of grace. So in humility and faith, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. O oh Lord, from the depths of sin, we cry out to you. Lord, hear our voices. Let your ears be attentive to our supplications. You have shown grace to your people throughout the generations, offering forgiveness. We confess to you our sin, knowing that if you counted our iniquities, our bodies would be bent over under the weight of it. We could not stand upright before you. Merciful and gracious God, Forgive us, for our hope is in you. Pour out the redeeming power of your steadfast love. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. My friends, God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. We can be at peace knowing that through the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Water. 
he ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahaloah as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the, the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ends the first lesson. Now I want to start with the end of that passage first because it's a little destructive and a little disturbing, isn't it? Here is the Lord whose beloved children in Israel have gone, well, amok. They have fallen away from the law and they have not only fallen away from the lessons and guidance of the prophets, they have killed the prophets preferring their own way of doing things, pursuing the gods of other nations and peoples because their God seems to be silent and absent. And so here is Elijah, who has been zealous for the Lord, the God of Israel, and he says, I've done everything, and I am the last prophet standing. It's okay, just kill me now. And the Lord says, nope, I have a different plan. So here's what I want you to do. Go back. Anoint Hazael. Anoint Jehu. Anoint Elisha. And with them, under their leadership, 
and will raise up a new people, 7,000 strong, who have been faithful to me, the Lord. Now, before Elijah could get to that place and that conversation with the Lord, he was exhausted. Have you ever been in that place where you could not take another step? You could not think another thought? You could not function another function? You could not deal with one more thing because you were so out of gas? Have you been there? I know you have. You don't have to nod your head. I know you have been there. I've been there. And what did you do? I have gone home some days and I've said, I am so tired and I am so hungry, I don't know what to do first. I don't know if I should eat or if I should sleep. So here is Elijah saying, Lord, I'm done. Take me now, I'm just going to lie down here under this broom tree and just let me go. But instead of letting Elijah die, the Lord sends an angel, taps him on the shoulder, and he says, Elijah, get up and eat, drink. And there, next to Elijah, is a bit of cake and a jug of water. He eats and drinks his fill, and then he lies back down for another nap. And again, the angel comes in and says, Elijah, eat, drink, because you need this fuel for the journey. This made me think about a story that I read not too long ago, and it was titled, The World Stopped Yesterday. And it was a story that a mother told about her five-year-old child as she was getting him ready to go to school. And she caught him out on the front step of the house, and he just couldn't do it. He was so tired. He was so frustrated. And he just couldn't do anything more. And the mom said, you know what? Sit down with me. And so the little child sat with his mother. She put her arm around him and she said, how are you doing? And he said, not, not good. And she said, well, what's wrong? He says, I'm, I'm empty. She says, you're empty? Well, here, let's just sit for a few minutes and see if, as we sit hugging one another, see if that fills you back up. And so they sat quietly for a few minutes. I imagine the boy sniffling, you know, the way that we do when we're crying and overwrought with emotion. Just Soon, the warmth of his mother's embrace settles the sniffles and the sobs. And she sits with him and she says, Do you feel mommy's love filling you up? And the boy nods. He says, Uh huh. <clears throat> so she sits with him a little longer. more peace upon the child. Finally, after several, several minutes, the mother looks at her child with love and says, is your tank of love all full now? And the child says, yes. Are you ready to go to school? Yes. This child is that very illustration of Elijah's exhaustion, fear, frustration, anxiety, anger, <laughs> bewilderment, resignation, all of the emotions that a human can feel wrapped into one. And in a phrase, Elijah has run out of gas. And just like that mother with her small child, the Lord sent an angel, not so much to embrace him, but 
but to provide the fuel of bread and water and presumably to watch over him while he rested so that Elijah could fill up his tank and keep going in the zealous work of the Lord. This brings me to a couple, maybe three ideas. First of all, we have to keep our gas tank filled. I don't know how many of you have this same voice, but it is the voice of my father that comes to me, especially in the winter time, when my gas gauge gets to about half the tank on my car. You don't want to get caught in the winter time with less than half a tank of gas. So dutifully, I go into the gas station and I top off my gas tank, and then I do not get stuck in a traffic jam, happily. But if I were to get stuck in a traffic jam, or if I were to drive into bad weather, as could happen here in South Dakota, I would have a full tank of gas. I would be able to keep the heat and the motor running in my vehicle for a lot longer on a full tank of gas than I would on just half a tank of gas. So, just like our cars, we need to keep ourselves filled up and topped off, not just with food, but with energy, with love, with fellowship, with kindness, with service, the things that fill us up and energize us to keep going. Second, we need to give ourselves permission to have those breakdowns to just say, you know what, I can't do another thing. I just can't do one more thing. And go and close off the world, take a nap if we need it, eat some chocolate if we need it, have a good cry if we need it, and to rest so that we can be filled back up to re-engage. Third, and finally, we are blessed as a family of faith with people who will reach out and say, are you doing okay? Do not be afraid to be vulnerable. It is in our most desperate and pained moments that we most need the support of our friends, family, and community assuring us that regardless of what we are experiencing in a moment, we support each other and we love one another. We are there for each other. In those moments when we cannot stand on our own, our community comes around and bears us up. Not unlike the angel tapping Elijah on the shoulder, eat, drink, rest. Not unlike the Lord passing by Elijah at the opening of the cave and saying, you still have more to do. Fill your tank, fuel up, and here's what's next. It is the love of the Lord that sustains us and is manifested through bread and water, through love and support of community, through the angels that tap us on our shoulders saying, you are beloved, eat, drink your fill, rest in the confidence that you are beloved. Will you pray with me? Loving God, in those moments, the five-year-old child who has completely run out of gas, and of a prophet, a servant, seeking faithfully to serve you, we confess, oh God, we have our moments of weakness where we're just ready to give it up. In those moments, oh God, send your angel to bring us comfort, bread and water for the journey, chocolate if we need it, 
and assurances of your love. For we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I think this passage was about this same time three years ago. And I remember reading William Barclay's commentary on this section from John. And the idea of Jesus being the bread from heaven and that in order to have salvation, the bread from heaven that the people must eat is his flesh. And I remember there were young children in the room just of the impressionable age that said, Ew. Because the idea here that is in the words of Christ is this idea that you must eat my flesh. All of you must become cannibals. And that is not, that is not what Jesus said. However, Barclay puts it into a nice perspective in terms of sacrifice and offerings. And so in an age where people understand that forgiveness and grace come through offering burnt offerings to the Lord, this is the sacrifice that Jesus himself becomes. The lamb or the ram slaughtered and given as offering to the Lord, as a burnt offering on the altar of the Lord for the forgiveness of sins. It is the practice of the people. It is the ritual for the people of God in their faith practice. This is language that the people understand in terms of burnt offering, sacrifice, partaking of the portion that is for the people. But the bread of heaven, if we look at that metaphor today, there are words in here that Jesus says that are about teaching. It will be the teachings that are the bread of heaven, the teachings that come from the bread of heaven. Feast on those. And basically, Jesus boiled the law and the prophets down to two ideas. The first being, love God. The second, love one another. And here are the lessons about God that you need to go. God is almighty. God is sovereign. God is full of grace. God is not the way that our ancestors understood God to be. God is this way. God is the living bread. Partake of that Partake of what I bring from the one who sent me, says Jesus. And sometimes, as we've seen in recent weeks, it is the physical bread, the loaves and the fishes. It is the physical feed, eat your fill. Gather up the leftovers. And other times, it is the lessons that come through healing touch. Through an assuring word, take up your mat and walk. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. All of the stories, all of the parables Jesus tells are lessons that point to us about the love and grace of God and of about the sacrifice that Jesus has come to make as bread from heaven for the world, once and for all. Ritual of 
burnt offering means nothing if we don't put ourselves into it with our hearts and our minds and our being. And I'm not saying put yourself on that altar. That's not what I'm saying. But the ritual is much more than simply slaughtering the lamb and putting it on the altar, making a burnt offering of it. It is that prayerful work that we do in our head and in our heart that said, Lord, I recognize I have been sinful. I make this offering in prayer and thanksgiving that you offer grace and forgiveness. For Jesus, presenting himself as the very offering, the very bread of heaven, of which the world partakes, Jesus goes to that altar so that we don't have to. He goes to that altar and he says, I offer myself for the forgiveness and sins of the world, that others would know the grace and love of God and the restoration of right relationship according to the will and desire of the Lord God Almighty. This is what we believe in. This is where faith brings us to these moments, recognizing that we don't have to produce the bread. Because just like for Elijah under the broom tree, the bread and the water were provided that grace, that love, shone through the gift of bread and water for one man. A zealous prophet doing the work of the Lord on the Lord's behalf. And here is Jesus, God, in the second person, the Son, himself, coming into the world to be that very gift, that very sacrifice, once and for all. And the gift that Christ gives is given in vain if we do not partake of it. That make sense? The gift of love is given in vain if we do not participate in the love of Christ, that very sacrifice that Christ made for us his disciples then went out and did the same thing in spreading the gospel. And their disciples also sacrificing themselves for the sake of the gospel. It was not too many years ago, maybe 10 or 12, the Presbyterian Church had missionaries who were serving in Africa and in this particular region, there was civil war going on. And it was a husband and wife team who were there. And they bore the brunt of an attack. And they were hospitalized for many, many weeks. The husband was severely injured. It took a long, long time for him to recover his health after his injuries. And the first thing that he and his wife said was, when will we go back? Driven by love to serve the Lord and the people whom the Lord loves, even in the face of danger. They went. And I think they're still doing missionary where They may have retired by now, but they did go back. calls us to service in the gospel, to love one another, to serve one another, to go in harm's way, to protect one another. We partake of the sacrifice of Jesus, knowing that we are beloved forgiven 
and share that grace and love with the world. Because that is what is demanded. Thereby, the bread of heaven that came for us, that came for our ancestors, is still available for generations to come forever and ever. Amen, right? The bread that comes from heaven is sent by God. And there will be days when we are that bread of heaven for others, just like that mother was for her young child, just like the angel was for Elijah, just like we are when we gather around one another in support of one who is hurting. And some days when we are the one who is hurting, the community gathers around us and raises us up. Not because of anything we have done, but because it is what God directs us to do. We are the bread from heaven, sent by Christ into the world to follow his example. Let us all be the bread sent from heaven in any way that God leads. For it is our work and our service in our zeal for the Lord that leads us to it. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us declare what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Loving God, you sent your Son, and to us your Son said, This is my body, this is my blood. Come be fed, come be filled. For no one need hunger or thirst again. We give you thanks, O oh God, for sending your Son, Jesus, to be the bread from heaven and for the gifts he has brought of which we partake. Then lead us to life rich and abundant, full of love, and that comes with a call to your service to love and serve as he has done. We pray for your church, O oh God, that it would be a beacon of your light and love for the world. We pray, O oh God, that we would be sent to love and serve and follow the example of Jesus who came and gave his life that we might also live. We pray for the world, O oh God, and all who live in it. We pray for those who live in the face of danger, for wildfires, flooding, earthquakes. We pray for safety of your people. For those who live in the face of danger and violence and civil war, and oppression. Lord, protect your children. Let your grace be shown and known in the world. We pray for students and teachers who head back to school in these coming weeks. We pray for their continued energy and that their cups and plates would be filled to overflowing, that they might not run out of gas. And when they do, oh God, send us alongside in support and care. We pray for leaders who are responsible for making decisions, and we ask, oh God, that you would share your wisdom and love with them. We pray for this congregation, for those that we have named, for Jean, for Simone, for Pauline and Mike, and for my friend's dad, and for all who stand in the need of your love and healing care. Oh God, hear the prayers of our heart and answer according to your will. For we offer our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who was sent to redeem and save the world, and who taught his disciples to pray using these words and the boldness of children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, recognizing that all that we have and all that we are comes from God, let us now give back to God our gifts and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward?
Thank you. 